In this tutorial, we will write a basic Struts2 web application program with the help of Eclipse. And in the process, we will be getting acquainted with all the basic elements of the Struts2 framework. At this stage, we have done a full setup of our development environment with Eclipse. And we are ready to start writing our first Struts2 application. This is the step-by-step -step overview. We will use Eclipse to create a new dynamic web project, which will generate the web.xml for us. Then we will set the Apache Tomcat as our target runtime in Eclipse. We will set the web application context root in Eclipse. Then we will download and install our struts2 libraries in the webinf lib directory. And finally, we will add an index.jsp and we will add a struts XML configuration file. And then we will run and test our basic struts2 web starter app. Okay, let's start with Eclipse. We'll start with a new empty workspace. We'll go to our workbench. Step one, create a new dynamic web project. We create a new runtime. Apache Tomcat. We already installed Tomcat. So we'll just get to the directory. Select folder. We add the SDK. The latest JDK version 8. Finish. We specify JDK as our JRE. Like finish. We specify the dynamic web module version as 3.1. Keep the configuration as custom. We select the year creation. Go back to selecting our target runtime. Click Next. We keep the defaults here. We select Generate Web XML Deployment Descriptor. Now we've got our basic Java web application created for us. Now we're going to set the web application context root in Eclipse. Let's do hello basic apply and close. Next up we need to install the struts2 libraries and for that we need to go out to the official struts2 website and download it. This is the Apache struts web page so we will go to download and we will download the essential dependencies only. Save it. Show in folder. Right click to extract all. Here it is. And this is the lib folder that we need to install in our web application. So we can just copy the entire thing. Copy over to our Struts Getting Started application. And underneath Web INF, we'll just say right click paste. It says the lib already exists. And we'll just say override all. And now we have the minimum required struts2 dependencies on our class path. So now we will add an index.jsp file under the web content directory. We will use the HTML5 markup. Change the character set to UTF-8. Same with the page encoding. Insert our title, add a welcome message, save it. We add the new server to our server directory. Then we add the app, finish, right click and run it. 
So it looks like we have a basic web application running, but at this stage, it's not a full struts2 application. So we need to add a couple of extra steps here. We'll stop the application. We'll clear out the unused welcome files. So in order to enable the struts2 framework to work with our web application, we will need to add the servlet filter class and filter mapping to the web.xml. And this is how we will do it. This is adding the struts filter. Now we will add the filter mapping. We've added the struts2 filter web servlet and the filter mapping. Now we also need to create and add the struts.xml configuration file to our class path. And since we want it on our class path, we will put it in our source directory. So we will create a new file here. Struts.xml. We'll add our struts.xml outline. You can see we set our development mode to true. And here, instead of basic struts2 as our package name, we are going to use struts2 hello basic. This defines a struts2 action that would simply forward it to the index.jsp page. So let's try and run it now. Right click, run as. Run on server. So this is our index.jsp welcome file. So in order to test that the actual struts action actually work, we've got to use index.action. Looks like it works. Just to make sure, we'll go out and test this in a browser. Add it on our Chrome browser. And that looks good. That means the struts index.action actually forwarded to the index.jsp. And we have an actual working struts2 application. Back to Eclipse. Let's review. First, a dynamic web application was created for us with Eclipse that gave us the directory structure over here. Most of the requirements of this application structure comes from the formal Java servlet specification. The web.xml was generated for us, and here we defined our struts2 filter servlet and mapping, generally known as the controller in the model view controller framework pattern, and we also added the minimum required struts2 libraries. Then we added the struts XML configuration file. Here we've got to take note that we can also use Java annotations for our configuration, but we will be using struts.xml to help us understand the framework better. Inside the struts.xml, we defined a package name, and this extends the struts default, which is actually a default set of configured interceptors that comes with struts2. So we have made use of what is known as intelligent defaults and another struts default.xml. And then here we have defined what is known as a pass-through action that does not specify an implementation class. And we also did not specify a package namespace for our pass-through action, which means our index action was called from the servlet context root of our application. And that's a wrap.